Welcome to Tabletop Battle and Spirit Friend in the Fellowship. This is Wild. That's fine. Yes. And we are now going to show you a quick how to play Age of Sigmar video just to give you a little feel for the game and what you need to play and uh, how you conduct a, a round of, uh, of action. And after that we will do a series of battles where we will take you through the content of the starter box uh, from just a small battle with two models up to the full content of uh, the whole starter set. How to play Age of Zygmar. This is the rule book. It's only four pages long, so that's quite handy and easy, of course. There are some more rules, of course, but those are connected to the different war scrolls and a war scroll is something that tells you something about <coughs> a specific unit. In this case we have the Liberators from the Stormcast Eternals and we have the Blood Warriors uh, from uh, the Chaos side. To play the game you need a set of the rules, a set of the war scrolls for your miniatures, something to measure with and a set of dice. The War Scrolls and the rules are all found in the Age of Sigmar app on iPhone and Android. And they are free. And they are free to download. They are also on the Games Workshop website. So we have all the rules here in the app. And you can find all the war different War Scrolls for the different factions. So there are now four different factions. There are the Grand Alliance Order, which contains the Stormcast Eternals and the likes. We have Chaos, which are the Cornblood Bound and other Chaos. We have Death, which are the Death Rattle Hordes and the uh, Gorfins. And then you have Destructions, which are the Uruks and the Ogors. So after you have gathered your stuff that you need to play, you have found your armies, you have downloaded your uh, War Scrolls for the armies that you have, uh, from before or have bought, uh, you now need to build your army. And to do that, there are three ways to do that when this video is released. Uh, the first way is the one that we have shown you or will show you in the videos that are coming, and that is to bring what you have, as is in this case the uh, units from the uh, starter set that you will see uh, in the coming videos. Or there is narrative play. Uh, and the third will be point-based, just like you know from Warhammer uh, Fantasy 8th edition. Next up, you need to find a battlefield for your miniatures to play, and this can be any suitable flat surface, uh, as long as it's at least 3 by 3 feet large, so that there will be some room to maneuver. And then, you can add uh, terrain features if you want that. There's a handy table in the uh, rule set, where you can roll to see if there are terrain and how many terrain features there are. And also, if you go with terrain, you will also have a scenery table and they will have different abilities. And we will also uh, mention that in the videos to come, that uh, some terrain features that you can actually buy uh, will have their own war scrolls, so that actually they have some kind of uh, special ability on them already. So when you have found your battlefield, it's star time to start to play. Both players roll uh, roll off with uh, one dice each, and the one with the highest dice roll can then choose how you split the table. So there are three examples on how to split the table. And then the player with the highest roll choose one of his units and puts it down on the table, and it has to be uh, 12 inches away from the opponent's territory. And then the players alternate between putting down the, uh, their units. So the player who is first finished with setting up his whole army gets to choose which of the player who gets to go first in the first turn. And after you have finished setting up all your units, you nominate one of your model, uh, models in your army to be your general. This general has command abilities as described in the rules of the hero phase. 
So we will come to those later. Battle in the mortal realms in Age of Sigmar are brutal and it's a fight to the death. So you fight until you have destroyed your opponents or you have been destroyed yourself. And then the, uh, the victor claims a major victory. If you are not able to fight until the last model of your opponent or yourself is destroyed, you uh, simply check who has lost more models compared to their starting number and the one who has lost the least percentage of models achieves a minor victory. If one army has a third more models than the other, the uh, uh, army with the, the, the player with the least amount of miniatures can take sudden death victories. There are different objectives to reach through the game. And that takes us in to the battle. Yes, the battle round. And this is uh, the phases that you go through. First you have the hero phase where you cast spells and use abilities. Then you have the movement phase. After that you come into the shooting phase. And next is the charge phase. And then you have the combat phase where units that charged into combat or piled into combat, if they already were in combat, fight. And then you have the battle shock test where you actually see if you lose more models due to fear and, uh, well, shock. So let's uh, take you through one round. Uh, there are no heroes in this uh, particular battle, but heroes will have in their war scrolls, they will have uh, a special ability that they can use to enhance units around them. They use these abilities in the hero phase. And we will skip the hero phase since we don't have any heroes. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to the movement phase. And if you take a look at the liberators, they have a move of 5 inches. That means liberators can move up to 5 inches. So we move them here, but there is one important thing. Even though we can move 5 inches, it cannot be closer to any enemy model than 3 inches. So they will now have to stop here. What they also could have done if they were further away from the enemy is throw a dice. And I get a two. And they run an extra two inches on their original five inch movement. For a total of seven. But if you do a run move, you are not allowed to charge or shoot in their respective phases. The next phase is shooting phase. You will have to look at your war scroll and see what weapons your unit has. It will say ranged weapon and melee weapons. The Liberators does not have any ranged weapon. So we skip the shooting and we move on to the charge phase. And to charge you use two dice, you roll them and that is your charge range. So for the Liberators that are going to attack the Blood Warriors, they can move a total of 6 inches. It's enough to get within half an inch of an enemy model to be able to complete the charge. So in this case, all of them can move in. You have to move the uh, front models in straight ahead in base contact with your uh, enemy. So the Liberators manage to charge in, and then it is the combat phase. Yes, and in the combat phase you do something called a pile-in move first, where you can move any models that have not been able to get within one inch, in this case, because their range on their weapon is one inch. So to be able to fight with all men, I can do a pile-in move with this man, and one with this man, so that all of them get into base contact with the enemy. Now, if you now look at the Liberator's stat line, they have two attacks each. So, five men equals ten dice in attack. So we find ten dice. It's also very easy because they have to hit value of four plus, so you don't need any uh, big tables or charge to look at. Four plus to hit with this weapon, which is a war hammer. So I roll ten dice. Actually, you have a, um, a um, Liberator Prime 
which is the leader of this group and he has one additional attack which actually gives us 11 so 4 plus and here you can see we score a total of 5, 6 and those are the hits we managed to score 6 and then we have a wound roll which is a 3 plus so 3 plus 2 wound on our 6 hits and then you see we score a total of 4 wounds now the blood warriors now have to take a save and as you can see they have a save of 4 plus um, there are some weapons that have a rend ability which will make that save number higher but in this case there is no rend so you will have to take a save on 4 plus yep so two saves and two fails then we see that the damage of uh, the Warhammer uh, attacks is one so that means I get two wounds of damage and we see that each blood warrior has two wounds that means one is dead yes you have to distribute wounds to the first model that get hit and then further hits onto the same model until it is killed or survives if you manage to save all the saves and then it is corn uh, corn player's turn into piling and can then attack. It's the same. So you got four models left since we killed one. So you got eight attacks plus one for your, uh, which is called a uh, champion. champion. So you and got nine attacks. So if they have two attacks, three plus to hit. For a total of five, five hits, wounding on four plus, which is three wounds. Yeah, that's a one. And that means the liberators have to take saves, and also in this case there is no rend on the weapon. And the liberators also have a four plus save. So I will roll three dice to save those wounds. And I fail all of them. And they also have two wounds, so I lose one model here. I can choose which model I want to lose, and then there is one model with only one hit point left. And after the charge, or after the combat phase, you move on to the battle shock phase, where you test your bravery. And every uh, war scroll, where you have a unit, have a bravery attached to them. And in this case, the liberators have a bravery of six. So all I have to do now is roll a die. That's a 3. I add the one model that got killed. If it was two models, I would have added two. Uh, for a total of four. And since that is less than my bravery, nothing happens. And for the Blood Warriors, I dice, I get two. Plus the one is three. And they have a bravery of six, so nothing happens. But say, for example, that I rolled a six. And a one, that is seven and then you subtract the bravery of six that means another model is dead yes so that is how uh, the battle shock phase works uh, it can be quite devastating so it's uh, worthwhile to uh, check your abilities and see if there's anything you can modify your bravery with yes and also to have heroes close that can help them survive all heroes have this, this special ability that allows one unit that you select to uh, not having to take the battle shock test. And also there are some special abilities on the different war scrolls uh, that we have not gone into now. But this is the basics of fighting. So after both player has played their first battle round, there is another uh, roll off. So say we both have done our turns battle rounds and then we do a roll off and then Svein can pick who what goes first. player goes first for the next battle round yes because now after I have attacked the uh, attack goes over to the enemy who attacks back as you saw 
and that concludes uh, the battle round and then you roll off after the uh, the shock test to see if there is uh, or to see who goes first in the next round so that was the quick intro to Age of Sigmar um, as you saw we skipped the shooting phase shooting works exactly like the, the, the combat phase uh, with the uh, values of the weapon uh, the range, how to hit, how to wound and the rend and how much damage it says on the war scroll everything is there uh, there is also sorcerers and priests who can uh, do different abilities in the hero phase uh, these are more advanced rules but uh, are explained uh, in, in the war scroll and used as I said in the hero phase uh, I hope this explains the game a bit better so you have a good understanding of the game uh, before you can watch the next videos uh, where we will play real battles and uh, you, will, you will see we will add more rules uh, as we go. Yeah, so remember the starting rule set is only four pages long but that is added upon with each unit that having their own sheet of rules. Yeah. So there will be more rules. It's not that easy that it fits onto only four pages, but the core rules are four pages long. Mm -hmm. So it's quite easy to get into. Yeah. And there is also different victory conditions you can do from battle plans, like scenarios. So there are a whole variety of things to do in the world of Age of Sigmar. And uh, we also have a special guest to join us uh, to uh, teach you all how to play yeah. um, Age of Sigmar in the upcoming uh, coming videos so check them out and you'll see who that is and, uh, thanks for watching thanks for watching